Hi guys and welcome back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality today. It's a cool video but it's not a video I'd like to make of course because uh, we're talking about how my Meta Quest 3 died when I was using Oculus, the Meta Airlink, uh, which is basically the ability to stream the Meta Quest 3 directly to my PC, enjoying a whole heap of different VR experiences using SteamVR. SteamVR is the world's biggest online platform where you can basically stream all your PC VR titles directly inside of your MetaQuest 3. You can do this by tethering it with a wire, although there's a lot of people complaining saying it's not working. Do go and check out the video in the link description below. And basically it died when I was using the option as there is an option in the Oculus MetaQuest 3 software on the PC to change it from the recommended 72 Hertz to 80 Hertz and 90 Hertz. And they may add, of course, 120 Hertz in the future for sure. But when you change it to 80 or 90, depending on your system, even my system using an RTX 480 i7 14th gen, it says that it's not recommended to do so. And of course, there are other things that you can do. You can go into the specific files. There are some videos online telling you that you can even increase the bump of the Mbps from 200, which is on the maximum that they give you on the actual software, all the way to 800 or whatever you want. But I think, honestly speaking, we'll talk about this after what I'm just about to show you. I'm gonna show you the incident as to what occurred at the moment that it, it just died. Basically dying means it wasn't the battery that, you know, there was still battery, it just switched off, stopped working, I tried to plug it in, there was no LED light coming on. I tried a whole bunch of different things and it just didn't work. So I'm gonna show you first what happened and then we're gonna go through in the comments because a lot of you left some really awesome comments. I'm gonna go through some of those comments with you and then watch until the end of this video, everybody, because, well, there's more to come after the comments as well, of course. And I'll let you know whether it's still working or it came back to life or whether it's just a brick now and I have to call Amazon and basically change it. Just FYI, this cost me a thousand Singapore dollars. To put things in perspective, it would be like you spending a thousand US dollars or you spending a thousand euros in unit terms. So it costs a lot of money for me, a lot of money. And I was quite shocked when it happened. I was very unhappy, but more shocked, more, I don't know, I had this feeling of like, oh man, all my money's just been blown out. It's just, anyway. Let's, let's roll the tape first and I'll see you after that. So what's very interesting, what's very interesting is that normally when the Quest 3 has no more battery and you press and hold the button, it will tell you it has no more battery. It will have an icon, like a, a little battery icon that's completely empty that will show you, tell you it needs to be charged. But the funny thing is that when I press and hold in my Quest 3 now, there's absolutely absolutely nothing whatsoever there's no icon that comes up it's just completely blank so i hope it's okay so the interesting thing is i just put on the power in the quest um from the mains i mean the the, the power adapter to charge it that comes with the quest but there's no let me show you that there's no led showing to tell me there's charging See, there's no LED coming on. Normally when it charges, there's an LED that powers on, like a red LED or an orange LED, and then it will turn green. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's absolutely no, no LED whatsoever. Okay, so I tried and I, de I saw something, I saw a flickering for one moment um, of the Meta logo when I did what you suggested. Um, Martignac 2. So, uh, so it has powered back on. There is an LED now. And this LED was not there before. But I can't see anything in the headset though. So we're about one hour in the incident now. And I tried the uh, power button and minus button at the same time again. And now it says I see the Android robot lying down 
with an exclamation point and his tummy open and it says no command. So guys, before we move forward and I show you actually what happened after I saw the Android bot inside of the Quest and you know whether it's still a brick, still not working and I have to return it to Amazon or whether we managed to resolve the problem and if so, how we managed to do that. Um, first of all, I want to thank you guys for leaving all your comments on this specific post that I put in the Communities tab. Um, so after you subscribe, go to the Communities tab, go and check out what I post there as this is very relevant to the community of the VR Essentials YouTube channel. And I'm not the only one. Apparently a lot of other you, a lot of you guys have actually put your own comments there. We have 14 comments where I put my quest tree died everybody, no power, no LED, check light on charge, no life, no nothing, dead. Check yesterday's live stream overheating at 90 Hz Airlink wireless VR at 200 Mbps. It died after around 60 minutes playing F1 2023 VR mode. Tomorrow we'll post update video, so tomorrow is the next day, so it's actually two days later. And uh, 39 likes, so thank you so much guys, and let's check out your comments. So let me just make it bigger. There we go. Uh, so they call, they call Maragla says, yes, I had that happen to me too. So happened to him too, and, and thank you very much for your, for your Suggestion there is to hold the button for 30 seconds. I tried that, if I did try it. Um, Revoid76080 said it's called holding the power button down for 30 seconds. Maybe have the AC or fan on in the room when you're playing. I have the AC, as you can tell. I always have my AC on when I'm playing because this is Singapore, guys. It's super humid here. It's not, it's not Europe. It's not US. It's not dry or cold or hot. It's 90% humidity in Singapore and it's 33, 36 degrees Celsius outside. At night, it's still very hot. It's about 26 degrees. So always have it on. But thank you very much, uh, Ed Boyd. Um, Absurd 22, hopefully it has nothing to do with the hardware in mass and maybe there was a defect in yours. Sorry to hear that. I'm sure they will replace it though. Yes, of course they will replace it. 30 day guarantee on Amazon, regardless of whatever you, whatever problem you have. So yes, but since I'm not the only one to have this issue though, so Let's see. Um, and do watch until the end because we're going to talk about other things I've been doing, other testing I've been doing. Cancel YouTube 026 says, Zach, Meta ain't worth 600 bucks of my money. And this was exactly what I was waiting. Why wait for reviews like this to come out? Well, yeah, I had the problem. So, and other people have had the problem too. Uh, Tobias, that was the case for me yesterday too. So sorry to hear that, Tobias. He also had the same issue. Third person here. I mean, there are other people in other comments that also said the same thing. Um, you must push the power button for 20 seconds. Okay, I'll talk about that in a while. Stack house model says, stack house model says, if you already did the crash steps of unplugging it, then holding the power for 30 seconds or more seconds, and still don't have power, then yet send it back. I've had a Quest 2 and Quest 3 crash, and that usually fixes. So not the only one again. It's a shame they rushed these units out, bad pixels and power, poor power management, and now death by overheating. Dave Holtzman, yes, death by overheating. Um, Madhu QC6911 said, push the power button for a long time. So again, thank you very much for your suggestions, guys. Uh, Simmind360 just rebooted. James JK1L, press and hold power button. User FQ1, no way. And Cotton Angry says, Pico for forever. <laughs> It's quite funny. So guys, as you could tell by the video, after one hour, I did do the power. After one hour and a half, in fact, it was longer than that. I did do what you told me, but that was during the live stream before I saw your, 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 your actual comments. But the guy, there was one of the guys who was there during the live stream and told me the same thing and I was trying to do what he told me. But as you could see, after one hour and a half, it still wasn't powering on and I had the Android bot that came up. Now, let me tell you what happened. I'm glad to say that after two hours or two hours and a half and it cooled down, it did power back on. Woohoo! It did power back on, everybody. It did power back on. And what I want to tell you guys is I wanted to know whether, well, was it actually an issue from the 
request or was it an issue from the power bank? Because I wanted to know what is the issue here? Is it really the Quest that was the problem or was it the power bank? So after it came back on, I had to do another test. Now what I did though, I didn't want to recreate the same conditions because we already know what would happen at 90 Hertz, 200 Mbps. Not tethered, Airlink, wireless, we know it will crash again, for sure. Undoubtedly it will crash again. It will overheat, it will stop. Does it happen with your virtual desktop? I did talk to Guy Godin about this and he assured me no. Now I keep bugging him for a key. <laughs> because, come on Guy, you have to give us a key. We promote you a lot, so we need a key. Um, but I will do the test when he gives me the key, of course. Now, what I did was I went back into the Oculus software and I tested it on 72 Hertz. 72 Hertz, I went back to 72 Hertz. And I'm happy to report that after five hours of gameplay, six hours of gameplay almost, using the power bank, that means I only used this guy for about an hour, an hour and a half. And then before it was about to die, I put the power bank on, which by the way, by the way, this video is sponsored by Zyber VR. Link in the description below, you get a 15% discount, everybody, on the products. And I'm happy to say that this, first of all, did not create any issues at 72 Hertz. We had no overheating at 72 Hertz for six hours of gameplay using both for three hours Three hours I was on F1 2023 VR, everything maxed out, and for another three hours I was playing contractors. No issues whatsoever, no overheating whatsoever. It was not the fault of the power bank, it was the fault of the Quest 3 at 90 Hz, it just can't handle it. It just cannot handle 90 Hz. It's that simple on Airlink. Now I don't recommend, I really don't recommend that you go into the files that other videos are giving you to tweak all the different settings um, that you can do manually in the debug uh, folder. There's a folder in Oculus where you can go and change. I'm not gonna show you the folder today because I don't wanna incite you to go and find it and change the things. This is not a how to do that tutorial today's video. It's more of a warning video. I don't advise that you go into your folders, your files, the Oculus files, and change all the settings as per other videos that are out there telling you that you can do that. Of course you could do that. But I'm just saying that if you do that, be warned that you may have an issue with your Meta Quest 3. Also, so I'm running an RTX 480 everybody, which is supposed to handle most of the load, most of the work, with an i7 14th gen. So this dies at 90 hertz everybody. It dies at 90 hertz after about an hour and 10 minutes, an hour 15 minutes, it just overheats, boom, gone, that's it, done. But it's not the fault of this. And by the way, this Zyber VR accessory here, the Elite Strap that they have, super comfy, very comfortable, don't need my hat. Very reasonable price, only a few dozen, I don't know, 30, 40 dollars, it's, it's actually very reasonable, so go and check it out. This is almost 100 US, so a little bit more expensive, but definitely worth it as I'm able to play with the Quest 3 for a good five hours with no charge, without recharge. So this is really, really good. And you don't feel it. You really don't feel it. I was playing contractors sitting down, not standing up. And I was playing F1 23 VR sitting down also. And I don't notice this, it's actually very good. And the cable goes here, by the way, and then just goes here. So no issues whatsoever. And you have an extended, an extended one that's detachable as well for even more battery juice. So it's actually really cool. This is very good. I love this. And this is good enough. It's not too front heavy and it's not too back heavy because there's no, there's no charging thing here. So it actually makes it lighter on my head, which is safer for my neck muscles and my back muscles. So I don't want to have the charging dock, the charging, the, the battery thing here. I like to have it here. But maybe it's possible to have it here when you're doing standing up things, but might not be great for your neck or your back. Could be dangerous, just FYI. You know, especially if you're doing long prolonged sessions every single day or every two days for two, three hours, might not be great for your back in the long term. That means a year later, two years later, you might actually have issues starting to happen. 
not a doctor, not giving you health advice. I'm just telling you, based on someone who's done more than six, 7,000 hours in VR, what they think could be a safer option. I think this is, I think this is a safer option. That's it, that's all I gotta say. All right guys, so there you go. It does work, as I mentioned, it came back to life, but I was very scared. Uh, I'm not gonna return it. I'm gonna do another, I'm gonna play with it for a while. If it does it again, of course, within the 30 days, then I will return it. But I think for now, it's just an overheating issue. Uh, I think it's, since it already still works after six hours on 72 Hertz, I'm perfectly happy with 72 Hertz, by the way. I don't need 90 Hertz. But once Guy gives me the key to virtual desktop, of course, I will undoubtedly test that and give you guys my lowdown. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe to be notified of that video as I will do a test at 90 and 120 Hertz with virtual desktop. And uh, also I'll be benchmarking 2070 i7 9th gen with the 4080 i7 14th gen computer as I have both computers here um, on ver various different things, both with AirLink and also, of course, CyberVR sending me the um, the Oculus Link cable as well. And uh, yeah, so I'll be doing a lot of benchmarks. So hit the likes, guys, so more people get to see today's video, of course, gets discovered by more people, and together we can grow the VR Essentials YouTube community. All right, guys, until next time, take it easy. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll chat for you there, and let me know if you guys had any issues. Um, but yeah, but AirLink, as far as I'm concerned, not a replacement for PC VR, definitely not. Um, Good fun for those who have never tried PC VR before. Yes, very good for those. But if you already have a Pico, uh, sorry, a uh, Pimax Crystal or a HP Reverb G2, don't get the Quest 3 for AirLink. It's not worth it. It's not as good. The graphics are just not as good. It feels much more digital. Even though it's crisper than the G2, the colors are just not great. They're just very flat. Um, and it just feels very, very digital inside. So, But for those who've never done PC VR ever in their life and they happen to have bought a Quest 3, I think you're going to have a great time. So don't worry about it. All right, guys. See you later in another video very soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye.